Close your eyes and imagine you're running down the beach on a beautiful morning. You're all coming up to a five mile mark and all of a sudden you get a sharp pain in your shins. You can't take another step and have to call your loved ones for a ride home. The day before you went to the store and bought your, the most beautiful pair of running shoes solely on its looks and colors. You didn't know there were different types of running shoes out there and now you can't even walk. People know, don't know that if they run with the wrong shoes, they can really, really hurt their bodies. You can get pains in your feet, knees, shins, legs, and even your back. I'm here today to talk to you about how to purchase the correct type of running shoes for your body. I want you to understand what kind of feet you have, what kind of running shoes you need, and how to properly wear your running shoes. So let's begin what types of foot you have. It's crucial to be educated what kind of foot you have before you even start looking at to purchase shoes. There are three typical types of arches that people have in their feet. Looking at runnersworld.com, an article I read tells a good description on the types of arches that you could have. First of all, it's your normal arch. Looks like a normal foot and everything's great. This is the most common kind of arch and is considered a, nor a normal pronator when you walk. This is when, you're, when you walk, your foot evenly rolls across the ground. The next is your flat or low arch, or some people call it flat footed. Is when your entire foot touches the ground, including your arch. This means you're probably an over pronator. Overpronating is a microsecond after your foot strikes the ground, your arch collapses inward too much, resulting in excess foot motion and increasing your risk of injury. So your foot rolls inward over your arch. And the last is your high arch. It is the least common foot type. This means you're likely an underpronator or supinator. Your foot rolls outwards. This can result in too much shock traveling up your legs since your arch does not collapse enough and absorbs the impact. So that's when you lead to shin fractures and shin splints and all back problems and everything like that if you buy the wrong shoe because your arches are totally shot. And the best way to figure out what kind of arch you have is going to a running store. Have one of the professionals measure you and tell you what you have on your feet. They typically have a running, they have you put on a type of shoe or run around the store barefooted. They videotape you on a treadmill so you can see how your impact on the, on the treadmill. Or you have an advanced computer program that you step on a pad and they show you all your pressure points and everything like that. And this is typically free of charge so I recommend you go in there and get your foot tested for free. So now that you know the arches that you have, let's take a look at what kind of running shoes you need for your feet. So what kind of running shoes do you need? R running shoes are typically like, um, hold on, sorry. Running shoes are different from each other and for a whole series of characteristics. Like most important which reside in the midsole of the shoe. So first, it's very important to choose the right shoe for your foot for the reason you are running. You can be running short or long distance, trail running, road running, marathon running, or etc. There's mountain running and everything like that. And according to runningshoeguru.com, there's three different types of running shoes that you can choose from. The three types of you can choose from are motion control shoes, stability shoes, and cushion shoes. So motion control shoes are mainly used for flat footed, like the flat footed right there, and this is a motion control shoe. It has supports, hard plastic areas right there. It's typically recommended for you to underpronate when you run, like roll your foot outwards. So motion control footwear emphasizes medial support by having dual density midsoles or roll bar, roll, sorry, roll bars or foot bridges that it gives you an arch and back in your foot. It gives you another arch back in your foot. The next is cushion shoes. 
is typically recommended when you use an over pronate when you run, when you run, when you roll your foot inwards. It's typically on a high arch foot. Cushion footwear emphasizes and enhances shock dispersion in its midsole and outsole design. Many shoe companies add materials to the heels and forefoot areas to enhance the cushioning properties of the shoes, like air, gel, hydroflow, and stuff like that. That's pretty much this stuff, the gel, and and they can put air or any kind of plastic, soft plastic to absorb the shock from your run from impact. And the last <clears throat> that mainly everybody uses is your stability shoes. It's typical recommended when you have a, a natural stride when you run. Your your foot comes down evenly when you cross the, the when you step across the ground. And stability footwell combines cushioning features and support features into this design. So when you run, you want to see your whole impact of your shoe evenly dispersed across the ground so your whole foot gets a evenly displaced the shock across the, the across your body and your foot. So now that you know the different kinds of shoes for by uh, sorry, excuse me. Now that you know the different kinds of shoes that you should buy for your foot, let's take a look at the proper properly wear your shoes. So how to wear your running shoes? On HealthyTimesBlog.com, it shows tips on how you properly fit your into your running shoes. Um, when you run into your running shoes, and it states, try your shoes with the same pair of socks that you would use when you run. Pay attention to the the shoe's heel. It should fit snugly. The heel that slips up and down when you run will only lead to blisters. There should be ample space around your toes. This is very important. It should have at least a quarter inch to a half inch of space between the end of your toes and the end of your shoe. Enough for wiggle room. This is because when you run, your foot swells. If your shoe is too tight and cut off circulation, and if your foot falls asleep or becomes numb, this might be your problem when you do run. The shoe should fit snugly on your arches, but shouldn't feel tight. And test out your shoes in the store or see if you can take a quick run around the block. See if they're comfortable, if you like them, see if you even your foot will merge with the shoe. And you should replace your running shoes after four to five hundred miles of use. So proper lacing of your shoes. This is very important also. You should be tied all the way up to the top. Should be laced and tied tight, but not too tight that loose feeling in your foot. So it should be it shouldn't be moving around your foot. And you should evenly. Um, you have ever wondered why there is an extra two holes at the top of your running shoe that you never use? These holes are used for ankle support. Your shoe should fit around your ankle snugly. This makes you feel like your shoe forms around your foot with great support. So these are the two holes right here that people usually never even use because they're like, why is it going backwards? But let me show you how to act properly do it. So you first have to go through the first hole like normal. Then you come back around through the second hole, back in the hole, when you pull it tight and you should be a loop left. Loop right here, left. Then you should get your other, do the same thing to the other side and bring your other side through the hole and vice versa. Should be going right through the holes like that. And when you tighten up, it supports complete ankle support right there. So your, sh your shoe and you won't roll over pronate or under pronate when you run. And it helps a lot. So I hope you all understand the information how I properly how to properly wear your running shoes properly. I have given you some helpful information about buying your proper running shoes. And I hope you have a better understanding of what kind of foot you have, what kind of running shoes you need for your own feet and how to properly wear running shoes. So with this information you should <coughs> have less pain and, and be more motivated to run. So let's get out there and get your proper pair of running shoes and feel 
a total difference that it can make. Well, thank you very much.